design effects. You can never get enough of them, so I wanted to showcase some really fun ones to make your designs pop, just in case, you know, you needed some help. So without further ado, let's just start it up. But also don't forget, don't forget to check out the first link in the description down below to check out my everything pack, 26 custom made products made just for you guys as designers and artists. The cool part is of course, we have an awesome discord community. You guys can also just check out, vibe with, learn from, and, and just like get some critiques, all that good stuff. But it is just a single purchase. And for the rest of your entire life, you will get any product that I release free, no matter what the price is, email directly to you guys. Join the other 7,100 and something, something plus people and i hope you enjoy it also i got a super super secret project coming soon starting with transparent gradient effects start with the photo of your choice and add it in a texture photo that will help create this effect then take that texture photo and make sure you angle it for like a nice stylistic approach keep this one thing in mind though that the actual highlights in the texture photo will likely be hidden and the shadow points will be the point of interest. Either way, now go to your filter, camera raw filter, and increase the highlights to 10 to 15, and decrease the shadows to negative 10 to negative 15. Also for texture, I'd probably bring this up to about 20 to 25. So now we can press OK, and then go ahead and apply a gradient map under your adjustments, and clipping mask it to our texture photo. Now we wanna go ahead and make an inverted gradient. So that means the color is on the left, and for the note on the right, it'll be a darker color tone, or in this case, black. Because if you didn't know in gradients, if you don't press the invert button, the left side is always going to be the actual shadows and the right side will always be the highlights. So you're always going to put the darkest color on the left, higher, lighter tones on the right. But if we're inverting that, the color will be on the right, left. And the, did I confuse you? It's usually like this, but we wouldn't like this. Now we want to go ahead and double click on our texture layer for the blending options and go down to blend if. Hold Alt on your keyboard to split the right underlying layer anchor and move it towards the left to start erasing the white on your texture image, which will then also showcase the image below it. And of course, depending on your photo, you might have to use the current layer anchors as well, but it's always nice to start with underlying layer. And honestly, then you're done. It's actually super easy to copy that texture's layer style, add in a new texture image, drag on your camera raw filter to that new image, delete your old photo, and clipping mask the gradient once again to your new texture, and now you can refresh everything you just did nice and quick. Still one of my favorite effects that I ended up finding myself for the record, I don't know, it, but it's just blend if, but like I was really happy when I s discovered it, just saying. Next is a super quick one, but plenty of variations if you guys enjoy dither or bitmap effects. Start with the photo again, of course. This time, head over to image, mode, grayscale, and choose flatten when the table pops up. This will obviously make your image grayscale, but this also now allows you to go back into image, mode. However, this time we can choose bitmap. When the bitmap table pops up, use anything between 72 and 300 output. However, since I like to maintain the quality and the document size, I'll go ahead and just choose 300. Then go ahead and use the halftone screen method on the dropdown. For the frequency setting, the lower it is, the more pixel space you'll get. The higher the number, the less pixel space you'll get. So I'll personally choose 85 frequency, and the shape dropdown will have different effects, but I'll go ahead and just choose round. Then press OK and zoom in to see the bitmap effect appear. And in case you didn't know, or you're just wondering why you can't do anything, in the bitmap mode, you cannot duplicate or add new effects to the layer, but you can switch back to RGB, but you can't do it directly, so you're gonna have to do it by going into image mode grayscale once again, then go back into the image mode, and now you can choose RGB. Now you can duplicate and add filters back to the image. And just because I love you, here's a little fun effect to do that actually creates a pointillism kind of effect through filter gallery. So head over to filter, filter gallery, under texture, choose stained glass. And for these settings, you wanna choose two cell size, then do one and then zero. And it's like a dotted effect. I did it on accident, I just thought it was pretty cool. Now, last up is a gradient mesh effect that just adds like some really fun texture to your black and white photos. Starting with a photo, we will head into filter, camera raw filter. In order to go under effects and add in texture and clarity so that our highlights and shadows come out more. So I'll just personally adjust these till I find something I like. Then head over to color mixer and ensure that under your saturations table, all of your colors are at negative 100 so that it's a black and white photo. Now press okay. Then we can go ahead and apply a gradient map under your adjustments once again, then clipping 
mask the gradient to your photo. This time it's not an inverted gradient, so the gradient should have a dark tone on the left for the shadows and a color on the right for the highlights. Now select the gradient maps layer mask and head over to select and color range. Under the select method drop down, we want to make sure that sampled colors is selected, otherwise you will not be able to sample colors. However, now what you can do is select the photos, highlights, and shadows until you find a ratio of color distribution that you enjoy. Also, do not forget to mess around with the fuzziness to control how much the actual color spread occurs. It might take a few clicks, some might look really, really bad, some might look really, really good, and the ones that look really, really good, sometimes you accidentally click and then you lose it, so just be very careful. But once you guys find that thing that you love the most, you're done. These three effects are just some of my favorites to kind of make your designs pop per usual. I just like to share just in case you guys were not aware. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video here today. You guys hopefully learned something. Hopefully you guys find something you guys can do right now in Photoshop. Or if you're working on a campaign, you got something really, really cool to just, you know, spice it up a little. But with that being said, that is Sesso HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later, much love, peace. Enjoy the everything pack if you guys picked it up in this video. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. Later.